to be taking up the Grux. We just uh, sang such high praises, <laughs> and Rat Pack is going to be taking Twin Blast and Narbash. Yeah, just uh, securing that that support stun that the, the teams like to have, like to have that stun on the support and usually on the on the jungler if they can get it. Um, Twin Blast, probably with how quick games are, he's usually the ADC that comes online the earliest. And with yeah, we just saw a twenty-two minute game, was it? Twenty it was nineteen. <laughs> Not even twenty. So to have your ADC relevant for more of the game, as it were, because he's gonna come online earlier is better. And like I mean the burst that this guy can do with the right click into the grenades is just obscene. So uh yeah, I can see why they've put high priority on that pick. All right, and then we see that Howitzer and Greystone are picked for Paradox. Greystone getting such high priority in all the tournaments. Everyone makes fun of him, but no one, everyone, and everyone doesn't stop picking him. <laughs> so, he's just one of those. He's just one of those heroes. He's just a solid. You know, you stick him in lane. You know what you're gonna. You know what you're gonna get out of a Greystone. He's gonna sit in lane. He's gonna farm well. He's gonna be your front line. He's not gonna give you any CC, but he's just gonna be that body that's <laughs> chasing down the ADC, getting in the way. Um, he's just constantly tower annoying, right? Yeah, like he's just. He's got his strengths. If you use him well, you know, you will get a lot out of him. So he's not like a technically mechanically advanced hero to play but you know he fills a hole that uh, fills a hole fills a role that people <laughs> he need. fills a hole all right he fills a hole if you get caught by me can do <laughs> all right next pick is going to be severog and moragesh coming out of rat pack uh interesting picks from rat pack because severog's more of a farming late game hero it has a lot of cc and a lot of utility um but i feel like he's not as prevalent and strong in this current meta as he could be in more of a late game meta, right? He is because his kit is still useful if you don't have the stacks up early game. He's still that route into slow is still so strong. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he's always he's really good for that displacement, just putting enemies back into your back line so they can finish him off. Um, and then if it then does transition into late game, he's just such a good, strong tank. So I still think he's uh. If you can't get the Grooks, I think Severog is definitely the number two pick. I just want to see it. Crunch give me my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, no, I can't my reason my it to baby. myself to, to make the, the Crunch a top pick right now. <laughs> I, he, no, he's not a top pick, but he's just so fun to play. I got mastery on him, man. <laughs> I got it. I got it the other day. All right, Paradox final picks are going to be Yin and Muriel. So they have a very strong front line. They have shields to make their fighters into more traditional tanks and protect their carry, especially that Yin who's going to be uh, right in there with that Morgesh on top of her. And last pick of the game is going to be Gideon coming out of Involve. Mm, interesting. Interesting. I yeah, I haven't seen Gideon for a while. He's... um. Because of how bursty everything is, so right now, you know, a lot of times in the, in the pub game, the Gideon come up, starts his ult, and he's down. He's down. <laughs> you know? That's why you take to find shield, man. That <laughs> card exists for, that for a reason. Like, but I mean, these sort of players, I don't think we're going to see sort of that. It's, uh, you, when it's used best is when you when you jump into a team that's sort of been team fighting for a couple of seconds already. Maybe both teams are on a sort of half life and looking to peel away. The Gideon jumps in, stops the peel. You know, executes yeah. maybe one or two players. That's what you're looking the for. The proper a proper way to play Gideon, guys. If you if you aren't sure, is you're the last. Your alt is the last part of a of a team fight. You wait until everyone's burned everything, and you just go above their heads and just show them who's boss. And that is going to be Space Jesus. I mean, to, to be fair, it, unless the Grux alts or he's low enough that the uh, Howitzer man can knock him. The, there's no one on the there's no one on the enemy team that can actually deal with him. That's so true. He has that in his favor, but you know you can still burst him down with damage. And, you know, killing something is the ultimate form of CC, so that could work. I I think that like divine shield is is a must on Gideon because if you can block any damage or CC like while alting, that's that's huge. It's a little bit of the CC immunity that he used to have. Yeah, when he was uh when he was from his old old school days, right? <laughs> Back in the day. All right, so we are just about what? Why is that upside down? I for oh yeah, I forgot about that last time I was casting. Paradox twenty two is upside down, and I don't know how to fix it. Let me wait, 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 wait. I think I might get it. It's flipped now. What the? 
I got it. We're good, guys. We're good. I'm ready to get into the game. With you with are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to get into the game with you are now, Nate. I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one, and go. Welcome to game two of the PCL and A. And it is going to be Rat Pack versus Paradox. Now, I'm friends with both, but I will go ahead and introduce our uh, new friends over here at Paradox. It's going to be Obamacare on Yin, Idoc on Grux, Tribal 2, Tribal 2 uh, on <laughs> Howitzer, Regal Infiltrator is going to be the uh, Fiery Red Greystone, and Solemn on Support Muriel. Yeah, and for Rat Pack, we're going to have a Strafe on the Twin Blast. Involve is going to be rocking that Gideon, that Master Gideon skin. Oh man, he's rocking the, the Master Sephrog. I'm liking that, that's always sexy. Uh, Team Reborn.net, formerly known, the artist formerly known as Ram Riddles. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be rocking that Marag. I'm, oh, I'm keen to see this because this guy, you know, a, a fed Mar, I guess, is a scary thing. And we all know one thing about Ram Riddles, and he farms so well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, Lewis Sayre, is it, am I pronouncing that right? It's Lewis Sayre. Lewis Sayre. Oh, God, that, that sounds so fancy. Mm -hmm. On the Narbash. Trust me, he's not fancy. He's from Quebec. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's French Canadian. Farthest thing from fancy you can get. Yeah, French? That's fancy. No, no. Okay, so. You forget, you forget I'm from England. Where exactly. England. So when, yeah. you, when you think French, you think Parisian French. When uh. I think French, I think back of the woods. <laughs> like barely speaks English and barely speaks French. <laughs> it's like right, I'm one part of that. I barely speak English as well, so we've got that in common at least. It's, I, I love him. He's an amazing person, but it's franglais. It's half of both languages. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's bad. Um, but yeah, it's it's always fun. We are seeing something interesting this game. We're going to see a duo lane in the left lane. Lewis Aaron Strength versus Obama and Solemn. Yeah, I mean, these they, they sort of players, I know that they, they work sort of, they, they play a lot with um, the LXNA lads, and they, they always have sort of these interesting tactics that they use in both teams, like the, mm -hmm. the duo mid lane and, you know, just shoving people into random lanes. As long as uh, with uh, Toronto Esports, they're usually trying to think outside the box on how they can initiate this laning <laughs> phase. So, see how this um, this works out for them if it's... I mean, you've got Ram Riddles in the lane, you know he's always going to do work, so... Yeah, two interesting lanes, because we are seeing Strafe and Lucera focus down the Muriel as fast as possible, so that they, she will not be able to shield Obamacare uh, in the future. Just Yeah, I think, I think that's the way they've got to go. They've got to sort of push down the... Uh, Push down the support first, because trying to focus on Obamacare early is gonna not probably gonna not gonna end well. Mm -hmm. So uh, plus, if they have if um, Obamacare hasn't got a head to jump off with that that last kick, <laughs> we have a harder time running away as well. Yeah, the minions aren't exactly reliable in that last kick. We are seeing IDOC go in for a gank onto Ram Riddles, smash and grab with the black buff. Will it do the job? And he gets to walk away for free. Oh, there's a dash oh. in from Regal and Idoc. Black buff, and it will finally get him. First blood of the game is going to be Ram Riddles for overextending in the offlane. Yeah, he's um, as always, he's never been one to uh, back down from a fight. Ram Riddles, he's always mm -hmm. sort of riding that fine line between sort of those those really good sort of big dick plays and suicidal so he's always sort of teetering <laughs> on that line on both of those um sometimes it pays off sometimes it doesn't um but i'm pretty sure you know it's not gonna he's he's one of those players that is going to do the ballsy move and usually yeah. walk away with it so when that happens like it might not be the smart play but you're able to walk away from it just enough times <laughs> to justify the behavior yeah, yeah, which then can when you're as then... good as him, you, you can you can pull him off. And if it happens nine times out of ten, but the one time out of ten it doesn't work, yeah, you take them off with a smooth. Exactly, but that also leaves a advantage for the other team because the person's overextending. Um, you could take it, you could take advantage of it, and you can uh, pressure that and do something about it. I mean, they got the kill on the jungle, not on the Greystone, so it's not going to make it too much more difficult for me in lane. But you know, anytime you boost the enemy jungler. Those ganks, 
you know, become more and more pressured if you get um, that boosted up jungler, basically. And and the smart, this is a smart, um, I don't know who swapped lanes where and who went where, but having Greystone against Moragesh is actually very good um, for Paradox because there's that ultimate she has to burn through. Yeah. Like, she's not able to farm the carry like everyone, like a regular Moragesh. And we are seeing Idoc overly aggressive once again, going for the smash and grab, will land it, applying as much pressure as he can. Lash kick coming out of Obama, almost ending up under the tower uh, for maybe a Narbash thunk, and they will walk away. Overall, a very good engage, no kill, but Idoc showing the map, um, putting pressure on the map, and Showing everyone who's boss as he walks back in the jungle with a black buff, going for the farm that he's in. We've seen this strategy approach from uh, the sort of a newly formed teams that tends to be sort of trying to put early game pressure onto more uh, established teams. Like we've seen it happen against Toronto, we've seen mm -hmm. it happen against Oxygen NA, where they try and put pressure on and they just sort of weather it, keep on farming, keep on doing what they know they do best, and just trying to get that lead um, and then just take the late game basically. Just trying to weather the storm that early game. The thing is, like a lot of the times, those newer teams with that early aggression do get away with it, but they don't have the experience to transition that early game lead yeah. into a late game win. Yeah, like I said, when these, these, I mean, even though uh, Ramrod is new to the team, they've been playing together a lot, and Rat Pack have been around a good, good, good while now. Yeah, they're they're probably they're, one of the oldest teams overall. Yeah. So, you know, they, they know how to sort of finish a game up and even absorb that early game pressure and just do what they need to be doing. I mean, Ram, <coughs> Ram on that, that Moragesh, when he gets, uh, when he hits that power spike, when he can start sort of one-shotting people. Um, yeah, that's, that's when things will start getting interesting. And speaking of which, Idoc is going in for, the pos he was positioning himself to uh, gank Team Reborn.net once gonna again. Have He's gonna have purple buff and he will be able to use that on Involve. He's gonna walk right by the Gideon. Where is he going? What are you doing? He's just chilling. Very, very confused. Grox in the mid lane right now. Um, he's had probably two or three opportunities to gank at this time. Go for the smash and grab. Clap it out. Clap it out. There it is, he's now stuck in one place, and he dashes away from the Gideon to dodge the subjugate, and now his teammate is being engaged on by Omain. And Evolve might be able to walk away, and he does pick up a kill with a lazy, well, very well-timed precision rock as he just <laughs> walks away. That was a drive-by, was that what, is what that was. See ya. <laughs> um, I think Idoc should have committed to the Gideon. He dashed in the wrong direction. He dashed away yeah. from the team. I think that the I thought he may have thought that the bleed was going to finish him off because he was very low, but it was wasn't just enough yet. Not leveled up quite enough yet to uh, finish him off. That was very very good play from an involved though. He's like, you gank me, not today. Does <laughs> <laughs> that '90s San Andreas GTA? Just you know. <laughs> Guns That's them down with a freaking space meteor from another That's dimension. What, it's always good to see about these these high level players where they know the sort of margin that they can push, even though they're low on health, they can mm -hmm. still sort of rotate. If they're not taking immediate pressure, they can maybe rotate and help another teammate just drop that. If they're casting, drop an extra Q on someone. Oh, Ramrin does be careful here. Oh, there's Idoc once again going in, smash and grab. Will land on the Morgash who has no escapes. And we are seeing Regal go for the tower dive right now. Idoc dashing in even more as uh, Regal is tanking the tower to the best of his abilities. There is the Grux going in with the clap as Regal's ultimate goes down. Smash and grab once again. That's going to be a double kill for Idoc. Very good pickup. Very good pickup there. Idoc's probably very happy himself. Saw him getting a kill on straight from the other side. Saw him getting a double kill on the other side of the map. <laughs> Kill yeah, secure? Kill secure? Is that, what, is that what we're going with? I'm sure Obamacare is shouting him in the team comes right now. <laughs> oh man. Uh, make it rain coming out of from Tribal as we did hear the sound effect on that. Involve chasing down someone doing what he can. Going into Solemn. Will he be able to land the rock? There is the shield just waiting for that to burn down. And he will pick up the kill. Landmine going in now. Involve in a little bit of trouble. He needs to try and get out. Idoc right under him. 
smashing grab going out. He will be able to blink away with a little bit of health, and it won't be enough as the auto attack from Tribal will pick up the kill. And if that didn't do the job, the lash kick was about to. Yeah, <laughs> I've been really impressed with Iduck. He's um, he's really been on form. He's doing work for his team right now, mm -hmm. sporting that that sexy uh, Obsidian uh, Grunk skin. Iduck's definitely come a long way because I remember playing with him before. Like before he joined the team, I remember playing with him, and um, you know. You, he wasn't a bad player. He's your typical like mid, low diamond player, but he's doing work in a competitive yeah. game right now. So that is, you know, that that definitely shows how far he's come from just a few it, months ago. He's, you know, his ganks are on point. His rotations. He's been out for every one of the river buffs so far. So yeah, he's definitely on point. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Thing is, also, I don't think um, Ram Riddles because he's died twice now. He's just picked up his ward. I don't think he's used to having a no mobility hero like Moragesh, and he also hasn't had wards this entire time up until now. Yeah, it's always been his playstyle though, hasn't it? but he's usually played a more robust hero or a hero that had peel in a kit like a Bellica or um, you know like a Greystone or a even a Count. It's just a little bit of escape. I know she's um, she's got the E to escape with, but he mm -hmm. hasn't picked that up yet. He's just. Concentrate on maxing out his um, his max his uh, his mark and his um, hive, so he hasn't really got an escape right now. You know, it would be a funny build I'd like to see. I don't think I don't think it'd be super effective, but it would be more obnoxious and annoying than anything else. Um, we are seeing Paradox pick up the uh, Raptors right now. Idoc had the black buff, definitely was utilizing that one for his team. All three are down. And Rapac didn't even really notice it was happening under their nose. Um, yeah, they don't. Definitely. I don't think they could do anything react really quick enough. Like a Grux with a black on it is going to absolutely melt those things. Yeah. You can't really react to that in time at all. Um, yeah, as I was saying, is get like a Thermobond, Toxigel, Moragesh, where you just use her, like, you know, her, her sustain ability? Yeah. Where you just rely on that, and you just run around to the enemy team, get like 300 health regen doing nothing. Oh. <laughs> Oh, involved getting clapped out of the uh, the ult there. Idoc being able to just walk away. Oh, Idoc picking a kill on to the Grux as well. Obama carrying a little bit of trouble. 1v3, he will pick up one kill. Will be able to sustain just a little longer. No, that will be Omain getting a nice hammer swing on to the Yin. Overall, a two for two. <clears throat> yeah, I still think that's probably going to favor Rat Pack there because I'm sure... Um, Idoc was carrying quite a hefty band today with uh, four kills and two assists. So At that point, yeah. He probably got he probably got more out of it at that point. Um, as far as builds are concerned, what are we seeing here? Uh, the usual stuff. Regal Infiltrator going for that triple um, healer token uh, build. You know, really wanting to sustain a lane. And when you're against the Moragesh, not a bad thing to have that much uh, that much health regen. Um, Re um, Ram Riddles isn't going to be getting fed anytime soon at this rate. He's going to only have that farm to uh, carry him through. He's farming a lot better than Regal right now, even though he's two kills down. But he's not yeah, going to be as fat as a traditional Moragesh in the safe lane. Mm, no, nah, it's always going to be difficult because you can't try and get those picks on the, like a, an ADC, which is quite, you know, you want to be trying to feed on them the early game or mm -hmm. the support that maybe pushes too far out to protect the ADC. Um, but Greystone with three regen tokens is going to be very difficult to... Uh, even if you burst him down and use the ult and you know, get, get the curse off, he's just going to ult, go back to base, yeah, whatever. And then come back out. <laughs> By the time he gets yeah. back in the lane, his ult's back out. You know, yeah, he hit, yeah, he hits him with the curse, full story, bro. So it comes back down, goes back to fight. And we are seeing that fight happen in the off lane right now. Um, surprisingly enough, 14 minutes into the game, not one tower down. Not one tower past half health. Yeah, they've uh, really done well to keep these towers up. And I think we've had fights, but it's been more of a sort of the river buffs or sort of cheeky invades, or maybe just if someone pushes out a little bit too far from the tower, as we see now, I don't move it over again. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the vision given. This is what I'm saying though, like, Idox had a pretty large advantage this, at this time. They're 8 to 4 um, in com compared to Rat Pack, but they're not doing anything with it. They're getting their kills and that's it. And they're walking away with their kills. Like, I, yay, we got a kill. But you haven't taken an objective. It's an objective game, guys. Play the objective. 
Oh, Obama Kai went in there. Probably looked like coming off worse off there. As we have the oh, junglers are chasing in behind each other as well, trying to go in. And uh, IDOC will actually get the smash and grab on Omain to peel for the enemy team and go under his tower. So overall, nothing uh, happening there, just a little poke. As IDOC gets a very well placed smash and grab to prevent uh, Omain from going any further. Try a little bit of trouble right now as oh. Involve is blocking him off with the black buff, gets the kill. And we all see uh, Omain go on to IDOC at this time, going in for the dash. Inoc will dash away as well. Obamacare very nearby. Lucere is close by as well. There's the thunk. Inoc in a bit of trouble as he goes to clap, but the grenade will blow him right off the map. He goes down. He was safe. And then he wasn't. <laughs> and then it was dead. And then he was oh, dead. That kind of goes straight onto these raptors now. Putting these up. One raptor down, two raptors down, and that is going to be three raptors given to Very the carry. Very cleanly done. Mm -hmm. I mean, IDOC was safe, but he put himself out of position again. This is where we're going to start seeing, I think, Paradox start turning their game around, start losing their lead. Um, yeah, I mean, you saw Rat Pack there, they got a pick on the jungle, they got a pick on the mid laner, that was their cue to go, right, we can get a really clean free raptors right now, and they did so. Yeah, this is something, what Paradox is doing is something that Rat Pack used to do, which I've mentioned a whole bunch before. Rat Pack being a very, very strong early game team, liking that early game aggression. Um, they used to be able to dominate the early game straight through and through and then not do anything with their lead, which is what we're seeing Paradox do right now. They've finally gotten a tower down, but Omain is right there with a double knockup, double subjugate, great play. We have a shield coming out of the mural as they're trying to peel. Obamacare using his ult for that one. They are trying to engage. That subject could be coming back up in just a second, but they will walk out under their tower safely. Omain getting a great ult subjugate combo, but no one is there to follow up on it, unfortunately. Yeah, it's always sad as a Sephirog when you're like, oh, did you see that ult into the, the root? Guys? Guys? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Team was just out of range. Once again, there is the Moragesh getting engaged on by the Invisible Grub, Smack and Grab, Double Pain. Going in for the dash and runs him over. Blasting straight through him with the charge. He's going to come up on this safe lane. He's just took the enemy green as well. No, Idoc, push the tower. <sighs> mm, unfortunate. Tower goes down, and that is Omain picking up a kill on Obama. Solemn is going to ult just a little late onto the Yin, and that's going to be a double kill. Unfortunate. We do see Idoc running into his jungle right now, but he's not going to do a whole lot as the team is very close by. He's going to go straight for the farm instead. If I was him. Oh, Omain under tower now. Landmine tribal, very low mana. He's going to disengage, but Idoc is right there going in. Colossal Blow <laughs> coming out of Sevrog saying, Get off of me. I am <laughs> not I dealing with your that. shenanigans. <laughs> you don't want none of that. Yep. Um, yeah, like, I think Idoc should have stayed in lane with, with Regal and helped push because they could have maybe pushed that tier two tower by now. Apply the pressure. You gotta do yeah, something I mean, with your advantage. Only, the only lane that Paradox is actually really winning right now is that left in the, that sort of solo lane. That yeah, the Greystone versus the Murgish. Um Involves doing a great job too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But Regal Infantry is only sort of he's the, the only person winning for his team in, in, in his actual lane. He's you know really controlling. Um, Ram riddles and just setting him back and just pressuring him enough that he's not being a nuisance around the map. We haven't really seen uh, Ram riddles rotate onto the map and be a nuisance and do what she's probably designed to do, which is to kill that ADC and you know take him out of the, the team fights really early. But he's not been allowed to do this because Regal Infantry has had a real lockdown on uh, on Ram riddles. Um, involved right now is actually six CP ahead of Tribal. So, Inval also doing a lot of work. There's a uh, Arc of Dozen Rock coming out of Tribal and a landmine to bounce him back. They're looking to take down this tower. Finally applying that pressure that they have in the game. Oh, no, they're backing off. Disregard what I just said, guys. <laughs> I don't know anything. I just talk what I see. 
Raptors are coming up in just a few <laughs> seconds, though, and we now we see, uh, should see someone I don't, on that. I don't return in the favor and steal in uh, our main screen there. Oh. Raptors are spawning. Idok getting caught into the jungle. Instead, they're just going to walk right away. Strafe looks like he wants to fight as they are on Raptors, and this should be it. Lucera going in with the crash bang boom, getting smashed and grabbed right out of it. Raptors are taken, not too sure where they went. As the Muriel goes for the alt when Idok dashes away. Two team fights happening at the same time. Regal and Trader doing a great job peeling for his team. Omain caught out, dashing away. Evolve going in, catching Idok in the ultimate, but the clap drops out. We do see Ram Riddles pick up a kill just a second ago on the carry. Involve getting his own as well as. Moragash is chasing down Salem, going to throw out the Hive, and Evolve using the teleport, and his team is following through. Solemn goes down to Strafe. And that's going to be a killing spree for Strafe, as Tribal's still in a little trouble. They are chasing instead of taking objectives. Now tanking the tower, there is the rock dropped right on to the howitzer. They can finally push down this tower and get all three tier ones off the map. Yeah, four for nothing exchange on the greystone. Just same base. Good guys, what happened? Look so where they're going. They're going. <laughs> oh no, no messing about straight onto that prime. And we do have someone nearby to stop it. Will Regal be able to do anything? He's running straight for the Prime. He doesn't manage to steal it. He could be in a little trouble as he's trying to jump away, but the team is just putting him in a happy circle and mobbing him. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I mean, that was a... I think I think he had to try and make that play. Um, he had nothing else to, do, to get that right? last hit. I mean, imagine if he had got that soul and that. He'd have been... But, yeah, I think uh, Rat Pack is going to have enough now to finish out this game. If he had stolen that, that would have oh, totally the Rat Pack off the planet. Yeah. They would have just just fallen up, like, mentally fallen apart right there. <laughs> IDOC going down to the Prime team as Inhib is dropped. They are looking to push to end. There is the double blink as he ults Make It Rain coming out, as well as, I don't know what that was, but he got stunned out of something. Stripping yet another kill. I mean, how far did they? Go? They're just gonna go and pick the, the the wave up and push it in. Did they you see up. what stunned involved? I didn't know. Cause he got stunned out of his ult. I don't know by what there, cause the only thing I saw was solemn. <laughs> this is a glitch we don't know about. Something happened there. Um, team is looking to pressure onto the core to end the game. Crash Bang Boom coming out of Lewis Air. Team Reborn.net is going to pick it up. Regal losing his own ultimate as the Prime buff is overwhelming for the enemy team. That's going to be yet another kill. IDOC going in for a smash and grab, clapping, trying to do what he can to save the core. Won't be enough as the giant ultimate comes out of Moragash, but Strafe picks up the kill, and that's going to be Team Reborn picking up a kill onto Regal Infiltrator with Rat Pack getting the win 23 minutes into the game. I told you, these games are getting shorter and shorter. Well, I mean, this was technically longer than the last game <laughs> we watched. But, I was going to say you know, it! You know, but I, I expected games to last between 20, what, say 23 and 28 minutes, and we're having a 19-minute game, a 23-minute game. These OPs being so decisive, and teams, I mean, Rat Pack got that four-man kill and just straight, no, you know, no messing about straight into that OP pit and just turned the game on its head. Because I think the way things were going, um, Paradox, would, they had a bit of pressure on them, but, you know, they were quite stable, and then that OP just turned things around so quickly. It was Paradox not taking advantage. Like, they were, they had Ram Riddles down. They had the duo lane down. Idoc was rotations were great. Yeah, just, was, they'd get a impressed. kill and back instead. They'd get a kill and back or go do something else instead of taking an objective. I mean, he was out for every buff. He was getting those gank, like successful ganks as well. Um, so, you know, it was paying off. So when he spent time not farming, going into lane to get those ganks, he was you know, executing them. But just not being able to transition and turn that into something more, and like the, the rotations from 
um, from Rat Pack when they actually started sort of mobbing around as a, I don't want to say death ball, but you know what I mean? They started actually taking those team fights, just executing them a lot better. And Involve did what we said we thought he was going to do, where just wait, be the last man in mm. with his ult and, and just, you know, clean things up. And that's what he did. Like, he didn't really get a lot of kills with his ult. He didn't really use his ultimate all that much. He was dropping, he was dropping rocks left, right, and center. Oh, yeah. Like, really good rocks. Um, but... What happens when when you do that game and you have your early game advantage? What happens is you're gonna hit a point in the game where death timers start getting really long. And Paragon, out of all the mobas I know, Paragon has the longest death timers I've ever seen, yeah, hovering really around point. two minutes almost. Dude. You know when 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 you when you know you've got the enemy say he's in the jungle off the field for say seventy seconds, and you can do a prime in what twenty? Yeah. Especially if you have like a Grux or something like that, you know, that's all you need. Just get, you just focus on getting those couple of picks. Doesn't matter how the rest of the game has gone. If you can get those important picks on the the enemies that could stop you, if you know, if you leave the support up and the off laner up who can't really come and contest you, then you take the OP and you can just win the game. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing is when death timers, hit, there's comes a certain point in your game where death timers are long enough where. It doesn't matter how much CP advantage you have. It doesn't matter how far ahead you are. If you lose a team fight and you slip up, you just gave the other team the win. Yeah. I mean, the amount of times I've been watching streamers where they just they throw a stupid defense on a, a tower. like They push in a tower. Someone gets caught. Someone else gets caught. It snowballs. People start to sort of panic and break and start running off and just mm -hmm. get picked off, trying to run back to base into the jungle and just throw the game. I've seen it time and time and again. It's really punishing right now. And, and especially the death timers, as long as they are, um, Prime as strong as it is. There's so many factors in the game that lets a game end that quickly. And yeah. we saw here, Paradox was ahead. They were doing a good job um, winning. And then Rat Pack was starting to even up the fight. But like overall, the trades were still very even as far as the game was concerned throughout the entire game up until that last engagement where they lost three or four teeth three or four people prime comes in prime is completely overpowered right now and just <laughs> wins the game it's the fact that the regen ticks you can sort of seize down the inhibitor you might have taken a lot of damage and the enemy might be up but then you can sort of regroup just behind sort of maybe t the tier two tower or something where the tier two tower like, used to stand sit regen up go back in you don't have to base and then pressure again you can and, just sort of... and the thing is the regen like is if anyone knows league of legends at all um, League of Legends has a very similar, uh, very similar buff to Prime, and that is uh, the Baron buff, where it has a regen. It gives minions those boosts across the map, but it's not nearly as strong as it is. Also, one thing that Paragon has is you don't have to be like you could be in combat as long as you haven't been hit, you're still getting that regen buff. Yeah, and that is kind of unfair. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's, there's been a few of the players, um, the high-level players, and sort of looking at what they think would be right. Uh, I think there's been a few ideas bounced around where maybe after you take OP, maybe there's like a 10-second cooldown, you get a full HP and, and mana regeneration, and then that's it. You don't keep getting that passive tick. You know, just so you don't have to base at least, go out and siege and do what you need to do. I think what Epic were trying to do is trying to get it to, they didn't want players to have to do OP, then base, then go back out and maybe not do as much with it. The prime is meant to end games and break the stalemates. But at the minute, it's just it's just so overpowered where it's just like, it doesn't break the stalemate so much mm -hmm. as ram it down your throat, stamp on you, and then leave you as a bloody mess. So, you know. Con considering, like, consistently what I've seen is that Epic's design philosophy um, as far as the game, it, it's been nail in the coffin game design, where like pri inhibitors don't respawn. Um, prime is as strong as it is. Death timers are two minutes. Like all these buffs are going in for the winning team will win.